The Undercommons, Fugitive Planning and Black Study, by Fred Moten and Stefano Harney. Chapter 1. Politics Surrounded. In Michael Parenti's classic anti-imperial analysis of Hollywood movies, he points to the upside-down way that the make-believe media portrays colonial settlement. In films like Drums Along the Mohawk, 1939, or Shaka Zulu, 1987, the settler is portrayed as surrounded by natives, inverting, in Parenti's view, the role of aggressor so that colonialism is made to look like self-defense. Indeed, aggression and self-defense are reversed in these movies, but the image of a surrounded fort is not false. Instead, the false image is what emerges when a critique of militarized life is predicated on the forgetting of the life that surrounds it. The fort really was surrounded, is besieged by what still surrounds it, the common beyond and beneath, before and before, enclosure. The surround antagonizes the larger in its midst, while disturbing that facts on the ground with some outlaw planning. Our task is the self-defense of the surround in the face of repeated, targeted dispossessions through the settler's armed incursion. And while acquisitive violence occasions this self-defense, it is recourse to self-possession in the face of dispossession, recourse, in other words, to politics that represents the real danger. Politics is an ongoing attack on the common, the general and generative antagonism from within the surround. Consider the Black Panther Party for self-defense. First theorists of the revolution of the surround, the black before and before, the already and the forthcoming. Their twinned commitment to revolution and self-defense emerged from the recognition that the preservation of black social life is articulated in and with the violence of innovation. This is not a contradiction if the new thing, always calling for itself, already lives around and below the forts, the police stations, the patrolled highways, and the prison towers. The Panthers theorized revolution without politics, which is to say revolution with neither a subject nor a principle of decision. Against the law, because they were generating law, they practiced an ongoing planning to be possessed, hopelessly and optimistically and incessantly indebted, given to unfinished, contrapuntal study of and in the commonwealth, poverty and the blackness of the surround. The self-defense of revolution is confronted not only by the brutalities, but also by the false image of enclosure. The hard materiality of the unreal convinces us that we are surrounded, that we must take possession of ourselves, correct ourselves, remain in the emergency on a permanent footing, settled, determined, protecting nothing but an illusory right to what we do not have, which the settler takes for and as the commons. But in the moment of rights, the commons is already gone in the moment to and of the commons that surrounds it and its enclosure. What's left is politics, but even the politics of the commons, of the resistance to enclosure, can only be a politics of ends, a recititude, aimed at the regulatory end of the common, and even when the election that was won turns out to have been lost, and the bomb detonates and or fails to detonate, the common perseveres as if a kind of elsewhere, here, around, on the ground, surrounding hallucinogenic facts. Meanwhile, politics soldiers on, claiming to defend what has, what it has not enclosed, enclosing what it cannot defend, but only in danger. 
the settler, having settled for politics, arms himself in the name of civilization, while critique initiates the self-defense of those of us who see hostility in the civil union of settlement and enclosure. We say rightly, if our critical eyes are sharp enough, that it's evil and uncool to have a place in the sun in the dirty thinness of this atmosphere that house the sheriff was building is in the heart of a fallout zone. And if our eyes carry sharpness farther out, we trail the police so we can put them on trial. Having looked for politics in order to avoid it, we move next to each other so we can be besides ourselves because we like the nightlife, which ain't no good life. Critique lets us know that politics is radioactive, but politics is the radiation of critique. So it matters how long we have to do it, how long we have to be exposed to the lethal effects of its antisocial energy. Critique endangers the sociality it is supposed to defend, not because it might turn inward to damage politics, but because it would turn to politics and then turn outward from the fort to the surround, were it not for preservation, which is given in celebration of what we defend, the socio-poetic force we wrap tightly around us, since we are poor. Taking down our critique, our own positions, our fortifications, is self-defense, alloyed with self-preservation. That takedown comes in movement, as a shawl, the armor of flight. We run looking for a weapon, and keep running, looking to drop it. And we can drop it, because however armed, however hard, the enemy we face is also illusory. Uncut devotion to the critique of this illusion makes us delusional. In the trick of politics, we are insufficient, scarce, waiting in pockets of resistance, in stairwells, in alleys, in vain. The false image and its critique Threaten the common with democracy, which is only ever to come, so that one day, which is only never to come, we will be more than what we are. But we already are. We are already here, moving. We've been around. We are more than politics, more than settled, more than democratic. We surround democracy's false image in order to unsettle it. Every time it tries to enclose us in a decision, we are undecided. Every time it tries to represent our will, we are unwilling. Every time it tries to take root, we are gone. Because we are already here, moving. We ask, and we tell, and we cast the spell that we are under, which tells us what to do, and how we shall be moved. Here, where we dance the war of opposition. We are in a trance that's under and around us. We move through it, and it moves with us out beyond the settlements, out beyond the redevelopment, where black night is falling, where we hate to be alone, back inside to sleep till morning, drink till morning, plan till morning, as the common embrace, right inside and around, in the surround. In the clear, critical light of day, illusory administrators whisper of our need for institutions, and all institutions are political, and all politics is correctional, so it seems we need correctional institutions in the commons, settling it, correcting us, but we won't stand corrected. Moreover, incorrect as we are, there is nothing wrong with us. We don't want to be correct, and we won't be corrected. Politics proposes to make us better, but we were good already in the mutual debt that can never be made good. We owe it to each other to falsify the institution, to make politics incorrect, to give the lie to our own determination. We owe each other the indeterminate. We owe each other everything. An advocation of political responsibility? Okay, whatever. We're just anti-politically romantic about actually existing social life. We aren't responsible for politics. We are the general antagonism to politics, looming outside every attempt to politicize, every imposition of self-governance, every sovereign decision and its degraded miniature, every emergent state and home sweet home. We are disruption and consent to disruption. We preserve upheaval, sent to fulfill by abolishing, 
to renew by unsettling, to open the enclosure whose immeasurable finality is inversely proportionate to its actual area. We got politics surrounded. We cannot represent ourselves. We can't be represented.